Welcome. I'm very happy that you guys are here and with us so that I can try to help you. If I can kindly ask if you can mute your mic for now, you will definitely have an opportunity uh, to engage and to ask questions. I'll just go through some of the basics that over some time I have found that students ask questions about. And then you can see, do you understand what I'm saying? If there's any more questions that you would like to know or something maybe that I haven't addressed, you will get the opportunity to do so. So today we are talking in general about the formative one assessment submissions, which are happening in the next two weeks. So the assessments, are, well, firstly, let me just apologize. If at any point I have to minimize the PowerPoint presentation, it is because students want to come into our meeting. So I apologize for the continual interruption here. OK, let's go back. So the assignments are due from the Saturday, the 8th of April to the 15th of April. So it's open from a Saturday to the following Saturday. So yes, it is open from Easter weekend. However, after Easter weekend, that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, you can come to the campus to also make use of our facility to submit your assignments. Then where are you submitting your assignments or writing your test? You're doing so on our learner management system, which you should all know by now, Cole Campus. There are only two subjects that will not make use of Cole Campus. That is finance and media and financial management too for the completion of their formative ones. Now, after the 15th of April, just before midnight, the system will close and you will no longer be allowed to submit assignments on Cole Campus and therefore it won't be marked. And you cannot email your submissions to your lecturers or to your academic managers or to myself. Only assignments that is submitted on Cole Campus or as the lecturer required will be marked. So my advice would be that you need to submit before the 15th of April and before five o'clock because the more people who are on the system as the deadline approaches, the more pressurized the system becomes and it cannot deal with the all the demand. So it's when people are buying concert tickets. Think about that. If there's 5,000 people standing in the queue, but the road only allows for 2,000 people. What's going to happen to the 3,000 people? You're going to become irritated. You're going to wait. It might drop, etc. So that's why it's very important to make sure that you actually start submitting your assignments before the 15th of April. And I always advise the students don't submit all your assignments on one day. Submit one assignment a day. So in other words, I would say submit your first assignment the 10th, your second assignment the 11th, the third assignment the 13th. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, just to alleviate that time pressure and to make sure that your assignment gets submitted. Now, you will not be granted a supplementary if you did not submit your original assignment. And we'll talk about subs at the end of this. So subs are only granted for very specific reasons, which we'll look at a little bit later. But no subs are granted if you did not submit the original assessment. Now, I'm sure you can all recall from the orientation video and those of you that's been here a while how to log into Cole Campus. I'm sure you know how to log onto Cole Campus and also how you can log onto your Microsoft uh, online that you're able to use Word and your Boston Outlook email and also when the results are released later in the year you can also do that. So I'm sure you're all very familiar with how to use that. Okay, I'm going to try to go to the big screen again. OK, so where do I find my assignment briefs? And by now you should all know where your assignment briefs are. You go to your subject and this is usually the front page of your subject. Then it will say, see it says home announcements, assignment, discussion modules. Then you would click under modules and then other modules. You would usually see something say getting started and then you will see assessment briefs. 
then you would click there on the brief. Once you've clicked on the brief, a screen such as this will appear with the actual brief and you're able to download it. So all of you should have your briefs now. If you don't have your briefs, you need to go to your subject under all courses on Cole Campus. Then you press modules and then you'll see something that says assessment briefs. If you are writing a test, so let's say you are writing a test in advertising one, then you would go to quizzes. Quizzes. There's a thing that says quizzes on your Cole campus. If a test has been set up, then you would click there on quizzes and it will show you the available quizzes. So for this assessment, it will be the F1 test and you would click on there. Then you will see it says to you F1, when is the test due? How many points is it out of? How many questions are there? When is it available? How much time do you have? And then there's a blue button that says take this quiz. You press that blue button that says take this quiz. Now, very important, as soon as you press that blue button that says take the quiz, the timer will start. So if you only have 60 minutes for the test, the test will start as soon as you press that blue button. Then it will show you question one and you can start answering your question. Now, very important, Cole Campus automatically saves your quiz as you go on. You do not have to press the save button. Very, very careful. Do not press the submit quiz button until you are finished with the test because once you have submitted the test it is submitted you can't go back it is like being in a classroom writing an exam submitting your answer sheet to the invigilator if you've submitted it you submitted it we cannot help you so very important when you're answering your test questions you answer them and you just go to the next question don't press the submit quiz button until you are finished with the test then, if you are submitting an assignment, you go to assignments. Then after that, we can actually take a risk to go to the big screen there. You press the assignment button. Then after that, you will see it says to you upcoming assignment. Then you will click on the one that says formative assessments. When you click on it, you will see it says again, when is this assignment due? How many points is it? How can you submit? So file upload, then you press that blue button that says submit assignment. Once you press that blue button that says submit assignment, it will say to you, choose a file. Then you can look for the file of your assignment and make sure you have saved your file correctly, that you don't submit by accident the incorrect file. Then you choose the file from your desktop or your USB and you say submit the assignment. Now you can add additional files to your one submission. So you can have file one, file two, file three if it's necessary. But I always say to students, it is best to submit your assignment as one file. So save it as one document. Now, after you have pressed this blue button, submit assignment, you will have a, a receipt that you have submitted your assignment and it will look as follows. Submission, when did you turn it in? If you want to and you notice that you have submitted the wrong assignment and submissions are still open, you can resubmit the assignment. Pilar, I see you have a question. I, I am OK, let's not take the question now. Do you quickly want to ask me? Pila Matembu? Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, I can. Uh, sorry, I forgot the question. I'm just going to try to remember it. And then it, it it's it. okay. Let me go through it. And you know what I found is usually when we have a conversation afterwards, then some other student speaks up about something, then you'll remember it. Okay. 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 Right. So, as I said, once you've submitted your assignment, you see the receipt that says when you submitted it. And if submissions are still open, you can resubmit your assignment. Now, this is very important because as of this year, we have a plagiarism detection software called Copy Leaks. Okay, let me just submit this person. Um, so yes, I, I just remembered the question. Okay. 
uh, I wanted to ask when we submit, do we submit in a zip file or the, the format or do we just submit it as um, a document? Where possible, don't try to submit in a zip folder, okay? If you have to, you can, but I wouldn't advise it. So I always say try to keep it as simple as possible. Try to keep your assignment as one document. Unless there is very nitty gritty stuff that you have to. So you have to add this and you have to do this and this, but which I don't think for the formatives is a problem yet. So try to not submit it as a zip folder. Were you asking for a specific subject? No, I was I was asking in general. So yeah. would, a, would a PDF just be fine? Yes, a PDF is preferable. OK, thank you. Yeah. OK, so as I was saying, very important from this year, Boston is making use and every time we maximize the screen uh, of a plagiarism detection software called Copy Leaks. Right, so Copy Leaks. Now, Copy Leaks is an AI platform that is able to compare text from online and other sources to detect plagiarism and academic dishonesty. So, if you're trying to cheat, it is going to find you. Now, how it works is it scans each assignment that is submitted to detect similarities with other sources on the internet and with other sources of students. So if I am submitting the same assignment as my friend who's doing the same subject, it will pick it up as plagiarism because that's copying. Now, it will also indicate possible attempts to cheat or fool the software using hidden characters or AI-generated text. So you know what they will say now, the chatbots? You get your assignments to write, uh, you get the chatbot to write your assignment. This thing will pick it up. It will show us that a chatbot wrote this assignment or a section of this assignment. And the grading of your assignment, when we grade in, when the lecturers are going to mark it, they're going to use that copy leaks report. So they're going to see you cheated. You took Sarah's assignment in the class. The two of you have the same assignment. We have a problem. So what's going to happen now? So assignments may include a lot of the times that people give you a front page that you need to use or some template that you need to use. So we recognize that there is a certain percentage that is similar between all students assignments and therefore the benchmark is set at 30 percent. So if you get a copy leaks plagiarism report that says 25 percent, you are a OK. We're not going to say that is plagiarism, but if you get a copy leaks report that says 50 percent or 60 percent, hey, that is unfortunately seen as plagiarism. So. Remember the screen, so remember we have now submitted our assignment. You have the evidence that you've submitted your assignment on Cole campus, and if you want to, you can resubmit your assignment and I'll show you now why the resubmit is important. When we now have the copy leaks activated for each assessment, which we do, this is what you will find will happen. Okay. Right, let me just quickly. Right. Okay, Bella, what's the question? You have a hand up again? Um, I wanted to ask, is there by any chance um a site that the school has where we can do the similarity checker. Yes, outside. it's on Cole campus. It's on Cole campus. I'm going to show you now. OK, thank you. Yeah, so so there is ways that you can. OK, I'll show you how you can do this. OK, so when you submit, whether you're submitting your assignment for the first time or you want to use the site, it's going to say to you 74 percent of your assignment is similar. Okay, similar to what? Then it will say to you here, it comes from this website. It highlights it for us. It says it comes from here. It says to us identical. So the red is identical. What was minor changes if you only use synonyms, related meanings, or admitted words? So what you can do, and this is this is important, and thank you for that question. What I would do is if you go look at your cold campus. Submissions are open from the 7th of April. 
or 8th, sorry, 8th, 8th. It's from midnight, 10th of April. You can then already go to Co Campus and submit your assignment. You are then going to get this report that says to you what your similarity report is like. So if you then see hand on, on the 8th of April, I am submitting my advertising assignment. It's saying to me I have 74% similarity. I am in trouble because they're going to say to me I have committed plagiarism. Then what you do is you download this report. You then go and you go and fix your advertising assignment. Then on the 10th, let's say, for example, the 10th of April, you go and you resubmit your advertising assignment. Now the report says to you, you only have 25% similarity. Then you know you are fine. So that is why I wanted you guys to take a note of this where I said resubmit assignment. But this means you need to make sure that your assignments are finished way before the 15th of April so that you have enough time to submit it, see the similarity report, and then make your changes and fix it because the lectures are only going to start to mark from the 16th of April. They are not marking before the 16th of April. So that gives you enough time to see, hang on, where do I need to make my changes? So if you have a similarity rating of 30% or more, so remember the aim is to go less than 30, aim for 25 or even 20%, you will be penalized. Now, if you are a first year student, if your rating is above 30%, 31%, it is minus 20%. If it's a second year subject, it is minus 50%. And if it's a third or fourth year subject, it is minus 100%. If your copy leak similarity shows us that you have a similarity index of 100%, you are getting zero for that assignment and a potential disciplinary hearing. Okay, so just to repeat, if your copy leak similarity rating is 100%, you will get zero for the assignment, as you will see in your evidence requirements if you go and read your brief, and you could potentially have a disciplinary hearing. Okay, now delays in viewing the similarity report may intermittently be experienced because if all of us are trying to submit to advertising one at the same time, it will be delayed. So you need to allow at least 24 hours once you've submitted your assignment to get the similarity report. So if I submit my advertising one now, I might only get my similarity report on Friday. That's why I said to you guys, make sure that you leave enough time to get the similarity report and to make fixes. So don't finish your assignments only the last day of the week. Start at the beginning of the week. That's why you guys don't have classes. And time management is critically important. Uploading and checking similarity scores should not be left until the last minute. Okay, now I spoke a little bit about subs. So what is a supplementary? A supplementary is your second chance. But you only get a second chance on your formative ones if you meet one of these criteria. The first criteria is you will get a second chance to do your formative one if you participated in the original formative one. If you missed the original formative one due to a legitimate reason, like you were sick or somebody died in the family, and you applied for a supplementary with your valid documentation, so for example, doctor's note or a copy of a death certificate, then you will be granted a supplementary. So you can only get a supplementary on one or two reasons. One, you completed the first assignment, or two, you missed your assignment due to a legitimate reason. Now, how do you apply for supplementary if you missed it due to a legitimate reason? You email myself, kareek at boston.co.za. You will write your student number, 15267 wada You will write this, your surname, your name, the subject code, the assessment and the campus. So for example, you would say 1501200 Smith Cole Radio 2 Rad 2 F1 Santon. And you are required to attach any supporting documents. And you can only apply for a missed assessment 
within two days. So in other words, if the assessment submission is closing on the 15th of April, you only have until the 18th of, sorry, the 19th of, uh, let me get, yeah, 18th of April, 18th of April to apply for a six sub or a legitimate sub. If you get your marks and you didn't do well in your sub, or you didn't do well in your formative, and you want to participate in the sub, you do not have to apply for the sub, you automatically qualify. The only people who have to apply for the subs are people who missed the original assessment due to valid reason. If you do not have a valid reason, there is no second chance. None. Okay. Then remember, if you got a bad mark on your formative one, and then you decide, I want to participate, in the supplementary for formative one, it is at a fee of 250 Rand for a formative sub. So I repeat, anybody who participates in a formative one sub because they want to improve their marks, you have to pay for it 250 Rand. If you were sick and you missed it for a valid reason and a sub was granted for you, you do not have to pay for the sub. Now you only get one chance to write a sub. There is not another sub on a sub. And the supplementaries have to be completed in the semester when you complete the subject. So, for example, these subs that are these uh, subs for the April submissions will be happening in May. Okay, now we get to the opportunity for any Q and A's. Right. Let me stop sharing. Right. Anybody with questions? Obviously, I will share this. Video as well and post it on YouTube. Any questions? Um, yes. Can I, can I ask, uh, when does the first semester end and when does the second one start? Okay, so the second semester starts the 31st of July and the first semester ends once you've uh, finished submission your summatives and that's the 9th of June. Okay, so when can we expect the um, rollout of our summatives? S sorry, for the what? The? Uh, when can we expect our summatives to be handed out? Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, so you'll see from next week, they already start posting the formative two and the summative briefs, and then you will be briefed on your summative and your formative twos just after this submission ends from the 17th, 18th of April. Oh, so we're still going to have a formative two? Uh, are you a first year student? Yes. You won't have a formative two. Formative twos are for subjects that is year subjects, and traditionally it is second and third year subjects. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anybody else? Please don't be shy. This is your opportunity to ask questions. Anything. Anything. Otherwise, I'm starting to pick on people. Buitumelo? Yeah, there we go. Whoever has their hand up, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Tepang. Um, hello, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, I once heard um, the lecturer speaking about adding signatures to our assignments or something at the end. Or yes, what, how do you go about that? Okay. Like adding signatures yeah. and everything. Okay, so if you're not able to create a digital signature, it's not a problem. Where your signature is required, you can just write out your name and your surname, and then put your student number or ID number in brackets. So must I? create like the form or something where I'll be able to fill in all that information or is there where I can like download on it's on your briefs so oh. remember on your briefs on the cover page isn't there a section where they say you must sign yeah okay I saw I noticed then there where they say you must sign that's where you write your name and stuff oh okay or your, you. okay cool okay thank you all right Kia Hi, hey, ma'am. Um, I wanted to ask, I know for the quiz assignment, obviously it would be an electronic quiz that would be easy to navigate. So then 
for subjects like academic literacy, then do we send a word document? Is it you write, you do question one, two, three, and then mm -hmm. save it and then send it over? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can either do Word, which is the easiest usually, or you can save it as a PDF. Okay. So now it's more saved as a file on your computer. Mm, yes. Yes. Do Do you remember? Let me just go back to that screen. Then you're going to go to where it says assignment section. Okay. Where it says, yes. let's go to the assignments. There, we go to assignment section. Then it will show what assignments. Then you're going to click on formative one. Then you're going to mm -hmm. click on the blue button that says submit assignment. And then you're going to say choose file. Then you, go, then you can choose where you want to choose your file from, right? Then you can choose that Word document. Then you say click on that. Then it uploads it. And then literally you press that blue button that says submit assignment. And it will be submitted. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Right. Okay, Pila. Um. So, ma'am, when you submit the uh, assignments, um, mm -hmm. what is the duration for the um, plagiarism checker to give you um, a similarity? Twenty-four yes. hours. Plan for twenty-four hours. It's better to plan for twenty-four hours than to plan for less because it depends on how busy the system is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 24 hours is the maximum. 100%, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, there's a question just here that I quickly want to get to. Ma'am, can you explain do we type, how do we type? I mean, on the cover page, how do we type? So, so your cover pages should be on Word. If it's not on Word, you can ask your lecturers to give you the Word version of the cover page. Then you can just copy that part from your brief and then you can put it on your own Word document. If you need help with that sort of technicality, you can also go to the librarians at each campus, and they can also help you with how do you get your information on there. Okay. Any other questions? Now's the time, people. Now is the time. Ma'am, will you post? Yes, I will post this lesson also on YouTube. Yes, uh, as soon as it's posted on YouTube, I will send the SMS link with the YouTube link, and I will also post it on Coal Campus. So you can go and look at it. And, and my suggestion is, is to play around and make sure that you complete your assignments in advance so that you can go and test you know, everything, does it work, doesn't it work? Because if something isn't working or you're not sure, you can still come to the campus. That's what I always say to students. So obviously we won't be open on Easter weekend, but the staff will be here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we we'll still have some of the staff here on Saturday. Okay. How do we use our Boston info to log on to Word and stuff? Okay. So that was the screen I showed you where you need to log in. And so just go look at the recording again. Otherwise, if you struggle, if it's sent and come here to Delish so he can help you. Uh, do we submit our assignments in a folder or can we send five separate documents? Pearl, I wonder why do you have five separate documents for your assignment? Remember, you submitting one document, ideally, per assignment under a subject. You're not submitting all of your um Assignments as one folder, unless I'm misunderstanding your question, Paul. Because I don't understand why you have five separate documents. If you can just maybe clarify on that. Ma'am, is it necessary five documents a question per document? No, no, Paul, no, no, no. Save the trees, save the trees. No, 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 no. You, you, you don't have five documents for each question. No, it's one document. You write most question one, answer, boom, 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 boom. Line open, question two, brrr. Line open, question three, brrr. You save it all as one document, Paul. Please, please, please. Ay, ay, ay. No, that will just be chaos. Chaos, chaos, chaos. Okay. Is it necessary to do a word cover page? If it's if your evidence requirement says in your brief, 
you need to have a cover page. Then you must have a cover page. Otherwise, they're going to deduct marks for you for technical. If you look at um, the evidence requirements, sometimes I know there's some Sometimes it's 2%, others is 5%. So when they say they want a cover page, you make sure you have a cover page. If they say they want a reference list, you have their bloody reference list. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Yes, ma'am, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, is it important for page in the document to have like numbers let's say the when you go on the navigation bar and it'll tell you this is the reference this page is question yes, one yes. this page is okay no. the only time it becomes relevant is for bba students with their final research report but none of you are doing that yet so that's fine okay uh, can i also ask uh, yeah push? So, when typing out an assignment, um, is it preferred for you to? It's it's still still one document, yes, but like each question on its own page, or is it okay if there's space and you can just do question two, three if it's in? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, in higher education. We don't like the idea of having one question, one page, one question, one page. It's usually question space because it learns you about professional presentation and stuff. OK, there was a typed question here. Good day, Ms. Faboy. From what you've covered in this meeting, assume all of this information. Yes, this information applies to all students, both full time and part time. OK, hey, man, can I ask about the fonts? Uh, does it count towards the plagiarism? No, it won't. Fonts aren't picked up. So plagiarism is when you're using same words. So 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 even if you are writing in an aerial and you copy in words that they are using Times New Roman, they're not looking at the fonts. They're looking at the content, not the fonts. How do you put the cover page on the assignment? You you okay. So what you can do is guys, you must I think you need to come to the librarian, but what you can do is you can either leave a blank page open, then start on page two, complete your whole thing. Then on page one, you can copy and paste the information, the cover page, paste that on your blank page, then you complete it. It doesn't have to look exactly the same, just as long as you're writing the relevant information. So if you're writing if it says on the cover page, Radio 2 Formative 1, then you go write on your blank page, Radio 2 Formative 1. And it says student name, then you go write student name. What's my name? Karika Verboy. It says it looks for my student number. I go student number, student. So there's various ways you can do it. Okay. So the declaration of authenticity is also usually underneath the cover page, which is also a requirement. Okay. Uh, um, can I yes, yes, you can. A question. Um, I just wanted to confirm if this is correct in terms of mm -hmm. the the format. So the font is Arial. The font size yes, is yes, preferably. And then line spacing is one point five. Is that true? yeah? So so the preferred font usage is always Arial. Mm -hmm. It's easier to read on screen. One point five spacing. And then, okay, between 11 and 12. Uh, if it's 12, yeah, if it's 12, 12 is actually preferable. I must be honest, to 11. It's okay. easier to read. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. Um, okay, the Finman 2 part-time test. Yes, all tests are written at the same time due to security concerns. So if you're a part-time student required to get a letter for your employment, you can just send me an email. So yes. The test is from 9 o'clock till 11 o'clock in the morning due to security reasons. If you reference your answer, the app does not, yes. If you reference your work correctly in your assignment, so that means you've made use of quotation marks, you've put in your in-text referencing, copy leaks does not detect that as plagiarism and it will not count towards your plagiarism thing. 
Um, can I answer the can you the declaration? Yes, the declaration traditionally comes straight after the cover page. Okay, guys, any more questions? If you don't feel comfortable talking to me, you could just type it. I'm a little confused. Are we allowed to title the questions as question one, then answer? Or are we just answering without the titles as questions one, two, three? I would say, think about it if you were the person marking. What would make it easier for you to mark? It makes it easier to make you say question one, boom. Question two, boom. It just makes it easier for the marker to read it. So that's what I would do. Okay. Okay, loving the questions, guys. Good, good, good interaction. Anybody else? This people hasn't uh, spoken at all. Sando. Bocello. Guys, any questions? Okay, if that is it, thank you so much. Okay, wait, 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 wait. There's somebody who hit it. Oh, no, oh, no, okay. Can you please answer to Melin's question of plagiarism? In, it's in the chat function. Yeah, rem remember what I said? Yes, it doesn't count it. If you reference your answer, it doesn't count it as plagiarism. Yes, doesn't count it as plagiarism. But remember, if it's a direct quote, it needs quotation marks. and you also need an in-text reference. If you do not have an in-text reference and you do, and then also if it's direct quote, you do not have quotation marks, it is counted as plagiarism. So the app is clever. Uh, guys, Stanford University uses this app. We have tested this thing. It is very, very, very accurate. Okay, thanks. Very accurate. Okay, Tepan? Ma'am, is there a limit for how many pages you could use? Like maybe if possible, yes. I... I think um, each and every question now I started on a new page. Is that wrong or what's up? Yeah, remember, if you look at evidence requirements, it's not all assignments, but you look at your briefs. There are some assignments with page limitations. Okay, ma'am. Thank so you. So you have to look at per subject. Okay, thanks. Pella? Uh, ma'am, I just wanted to say there is a similarity check on Word also. That people yes. Uh, why I'm like this is because... <laughs> Grammarly and the word one is not a hundred percent accurate. Mm -hmm. This one, this one, I think is about 90 something percent accurate. Go and check it online, guys. You're going to be surprised at how accurate this thing is. Okay, Copy leaks. It, mm. the, the academic lecturer said we could also just use that one as a reference. Yes, yes. That's check grammar and stuff. Yes, yes, you can. You can. There's nothing wrong in using more than one. So I myself also make use of the word one and the Grammarly one, but I will still strongly encourage you to submit your assignment early in the week to see what the copy leak similarity is. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Tepang, you still have a question or is it a historic hand, like we say? Yes, right. So here we have from Coquetso, Mohale. Ma'am, for example, you're supposed to say advertising is a marketing tactic used, then citation Brown 2022. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Okay, so whenever we answer to avoid plagiarism, we basically paraphrase and then reference. Yes, that is the whole point. Yes. If it's not your own words, you are referencing. Always, even if you're paraphrasing, you are referencing. Okay. Bella, historic hand or new question? Okay. Okay. Guys, this is an exciting time. I know it seems scary, but if you've been in class, then you're fine. If you have kept up to date with what's on call campus, then you're fine. You need to start working now systematically through each assignment and finish it as best you can because it is achievable. 
I promise you this is not the end of the world. It is achievable. And it's always better to submit something than nothing. Because what is the worst that can happen? You are not currently in the Russian war. You are fine. So I always say submit something rather than nothing. Now, it's been great spending some time with you. And I wish you all the best for your assignment submission. Like I said, we are here in admin. Your academic managers are here. Your lecturers are here. If you need any help, you can just come to us beforehand. And I want to wish you all a blessed, festive, safe Easter. Thank you all. Tsipang, I see you put your hand up again. I assume you remembered. Yes, no, ma'am. Like, ma'am, I just wanted to ask, ma'am. So, after passing these modules, ma'am, second semester, we're getting, like, new modules, like... Yes, first year students, yes. Well, okay, ma'am. Yeah, life is hard, hey? Life is hard. <laughs> I, I yeah. gave you five subjects. I'm taking them away. I'm giving you new five subjects. Okay, hmm. hey, ma'am. It's and okay. The well, um, when was so the, the second it, semester in? Second semester in 17th of November. That's when you submit your last uh, summative. Mm. Okay, mm. You still have holiday. I don't have holiday. So think about that. It's nice. It's nice <laughs> being a student. Okay. okay You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Sorry, Pilla, we interrupted you. Um, I just wanted to ask also about the subject thing. Is it all the subjects that are just going to be for the semester, or is there ones that are going to be throughout the year? No, if you're a first year student, you probably just have semester based. Are you doing diploma and media practices? Yes, I am. Yeah, then it's just semester based. Okay. So in the second semester, if you diploma and media practices, you'll do uh, public relations one, uh, television, journalism, creativity. Journalism, they already said journalism, I'm not, but yeah, it's going to swap. It's going to basically swap other subjects. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. That's it, guys. Nice. All good. We're done. No more questions. You can drop off or you can quickly chat. I see T is trying to say something to me. Is not make sure. Not make sure. T, I don't understand what you're saying to me. Please not make sure. Okay. All right, guys.